Hey Dave. Hey Nick. We're in our thirties now. Yes, we are. I think it's about time we had a podcast. Oh mate, definitely. It's time <laughs> that'll get married. <laughs> this week on Whiskey and Things, Nick goes to New Zealand. I do, where I talk to Matt Wicks of the New Zealand Whiskey Collection. And back in the UK, we sample the Lafroy single malt ten year old. We'll also be hearing from the Whiskey God to see what he has to say. And I'll also speak to American Idiots Charlie Maguire and star Sam Lavery. What is she on the X Factor? Don't you label her, Dave. Don't you label her. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're listening to the Whiskey and Things podcast with Dave Giles and Nick Kent. I do not know <laughs> what is going to happen. Mm, me neither. Exciting though, isn't it? It is exciting. It's something completely new for us and I'm excited about it. Mm, I can. I actually have to look at you <laughs> across a table. That is weird, isn't it? We're across a table from each other rather than being next to each other on a sofa. And we've got proper microphones so we're not shouting over each other. Well, yeah, we'll have to think about that. We can be your central, Dave. Oh, nice. Mm. So sitting opposite this table from me is Mr. Nicholas Clark Kent. That's not my real middle name, but we'll go with it. It's Mr. Nicholas, County of Kent. Better. <laughs> He's the Garden State. No. No. <laughs> the Garden of England. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise known as Nicholas, the Garden of England, Kent. And uh, he's a bass player extraordinaire, also photographer, videographer, and uh, has made me look pretty in a lot of my promo for the last 10 years. You're welcome. Yeah. And sitting opposite me, singer-songwriter, Lothario. Lothario. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? It just means you're... Um, Come on. Come basically, on. Dave. <laughs> Number one. You're a lover <laughs> and sculptor of tea. No, that's not what it means. I don't know. It's just a word. It's just a word you don't know. just before. a word, and it sounded great. <laughs> Um, and thus is how this podcast... Well, if you come here for expert advice... Yeah. Uh, Let me finish your intro, okay. Dave. <laughs> lover of tea, hater of... And despiser of footwear of all kinds, really. Dave Giles, everyone. There's the no one here, so there's no one to <laughs> clap. I was waiting for the crowd to go wild. You were, you? And they didn't. Maybe they're doing that at home. Maybe we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Yes. Each week, we'll be bringing you, serving you up, if you will, in a silver Glen Kerrin. <laughs> okay. A whiskey of the week, which we will be describing our experiences with. And you'll also be receiving expert tasting notes from our resident whiskey god. Nice. And also every week we'll be discussing some kind of thing or things yeah. that we've been up to. Whatever's and we'll have some friends on and we may ask them about their, their favourite whiskeys or hey, their favourite whiskey stories. There's no rules here. There are no rules. So uh, feel free to suggest things that we should be doing. Uh, but we're going to try and get out and about. We're not just going to sit opposite a table from each other. Uh, we want to live a bit more. I've just got back from New Zealand, mate. Have you? Yeah. So, we're going to have some stories from that. New Zealand? Mm. Mm. It's a whole other country. It's a whole other hemisphere. Did you know, Nick, that the moon is upside down in New Zealand? You know what? I did, because it freaked me out. <laughs> right? If you're in New Zealand, you it's want... just the way it is. You want a northern-facing garden as well. Think things will not be the same. Yes, exactly. Exactly, right? I, yeah. I mean, I got it when I went down there. I got it wrong because the sun still does rise in the east and set in the west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. went to the east of the island to watch the sunset. Is that what happened? Yeah, but luckily there was a nice mountain, so I still got a nice sunset. But <laughs> you thought it was completely backwards? <laughs> no, I just, I just re- in, said it wrong in my head, and yeah. therefore went to the wrong side of the island to watch the sunset. Hilarious. Uh, yeah, never mind. Wow. Well done. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, should we go into the uh, the whiskey? Into the whiskey. <laughs> So, this week's whiskey. It's a humdinger. It, well, it's gone with one of our favourites. We've started high. It's, it's, it's an acquired taste as well, which is interesting yes. to start with. But we have a Laphroaig 10-year-old. This week comes in a nice tin. <laughs> Laphroaig is spelled L-A-P-H-R-O-A-I-G. Yes. I had to read that off the bowl because I can never get it right. But it is, we are pronouncing that right. It says on the back. <laughs> it uh, does say on the back. It does say on the back. But yeah, this is a Scotch whiskey, so, and uh, it's from the island Scotland. of Isla. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Scotch. Yeah, it's from so Scotland. I, I do think that we should do some educational things about whiskey. Yeah, so we let's don't keep bore it, you too let's, much. Let's keep it really basic. Nick, what is a Scotch? Well, Scotch is anything from Scotland, basically. Anything from Scotland. Anything. 
So the Proclaimers are a Scotch. <laughs> Biffy Clyro. Biffy Scotch. Clyro are a Scotch. Uh, they could say they are Scotch. Nicholas Can Virgin. you say that? Scotch. Yeah. Is that a thing, though? Gordon Strachan. Scotch. Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that into my daily life from now on. Is he a Scotch? Yeah, he's definitely a Scotch. Yeah, I suppose, because a Scotch egg isn't a whiskey egg, is it? <laughs> It's, no. an egg, it's an egg from Scotland. It's an egg clearly. from Scotland, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Did you break it? No. Otherwise, we have to drink the whole lot now. <laughs> no, I haven't broken it, but I kind of wish I had now. Anyway. I, I was on the way here and I thought, I need to pick some up. Yeah. I thought, how, how much was it? Here we go, right? right? Where did you get it from? I got this one from Waitrose and Shepherd's Bush. Okay, other supermarkets are available. They are. <laughs> You can get it there. Well, I bought this. This was £39. All right. So it's a bit on the steeper end. Yeah. But it depends where you go. You can get this actually if you have a Waitrose card. Again, other loyalty cards are available <laughs> for like 29 or something. But on the way here, I thought I'll go to the whiskey shop. They're bound to have it. I can't be asked to kind of wander all over town looking for the 10 because Waitrose, where I live, it's like they've only got the select. So I went, stupidly went to the whiskey shop in Mayfair, how much do you think they wanted for a Laphroaig 10? 79. Oh, Am I close? You're very close. 75 pounds. Oh. 75 pounds. So a, a 35 pound markup. Yeah. Just because it was in Mayfair. Because it's in Mayfair. This is nice. So we are. Oh, easy, Tiger. Um, we're pouring into uh, the glasses we're using. Are uh, Glen, as, as mentioned earlier, not silver. But they're Glen Cairn glasses. They are Glen Cairn glasses. And um, which you may be wondering, what does that mean? Because um, you can't see. Well, we're going to post a photo on our Instagram, Whiskey and Things podcast Instagram. It's a light bulb touch shaped but glass. But the, I'd go with tulip shaped. Tu oh, that's much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's got a wide bottom and a nice slim top, which basically a bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> mm, no, half <laughs> half right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah, moving on. So, uh, oh, this is, this. Stuff. it has a smell. It definitely does have a smell. Do you know? You Medicine, know, mate. You know, well, I was just about to say, Farmyard. you know what it smells like, um, which doesn't, isn't necessarily going to make people want to drink it, but it reminds me of cutting my knee and having to get a plaster as a kid. <laughs> it smells like a plaster. So good memories. Is it, no, great memories. Cause I used to throw myself all over the place. Cause I like, I used to fancy my, uh, the, um, the old receptionist at the school to get the plaster. Oh yeah. Yeah. What was her name? Can't remember. Miss, miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It does smell like that, but it's a, it definitely is an acquired taste. Yeah, this is uh, that basically is um, the peatiness you're talking about there. Okay, so peatiness, peat tea being the mud. Yeah, peat peat being mud, right? Or like peat's like, basically decomposing trees and matter. It's like compost, basically. Right, but so, so why would people want a whiskey that tastes of peat? Because I love it. Because a lot of people love it. That's why a lot of people love it. And Isla the island of Isla off the west coast of Scotland where this is from. Yes. Um, it's particularly r rampant, shall we say, the, uh, With, the peat there. So it's a particular aroma. Yeah. So when someone says peaty about a whiskey, mm -hmm. depending on where it's from, it will have a different different peatiness. It does have a, yeah, it will. There's a specific peaty vibe that Isla have. For example, I was, I've been in New Zealand recently and I had a PT whiskey from there. Have you been to New Zealand recently? I have, mate. You should talk about it more. I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes. I can't remember which take that was in. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, their peat smelt differently to the uh, Of course. Peat. That makes sense. And so basically the peat is used in, I guess, in the, in the process of making the whiskey, which let's go into another time. What we need to do is have a day out at a distillery together where we learn the process oh, mate. and have an expert tell You're going to take it. me out. God, it's been so long since we you've taken me out. Row a boat to all the way round, all the way round the aisles. Yeah, I'm game. Excellent, you yeah. can row. Um, you got better arms than me. Good. No one cares about the things. Well, some people care about the things. I like the things. I like the things. Should we have I, a thing? I think we should have a thing. So you went to New Zealand recently. I did. I. Played bass in Green Day's American Idiot Musical. And recently we were lucky enough to go to Auckland and do about a 10 day run out there. So you did it in the UK first? Yeah, in 2016 we did a tour and a little stint in the West End. And this year we did another UK tour as well. 
Which is fun. And then they take they, they take the whole of the UK tour a halfway around the world. Yeah, the whole company. I know, it sounds crazy. But yeah. That is nice. It is. Yeah, it's good. The yeah, whole cast. The whole cast, crew, the lot. Looked after. Amazing. Loved it. Amazing city. And while I was there, I managed to yeah. sit down and have a little chat with the drummer of the show, Charlie Maguire, and one of the stars of the show, Sam Lavery, which we're about nice. to listen to right now. Sam Lavery. Nicholas Kent. Charlie Maguire. Nicholas Kent. <laughs> Sam Lavery, uh, X Factor star. You just star. did it. You just did star. it. You just did it. You just titled me. You labelled me. And lead of American Idiot, the Thank musical. Thank you. I was getting there. Poor stuff. See? Just Do you like whiskey? Um, yeah. Oh, you're lying to me, aren't you? Um, can't say I've like. Right, this interview is over. Oh, oh. Okay. Whiskey. Um. Uh, is that? Is, is that it, Nick? Mm, yeah, sorry. All right. Um, that, that, I kind that, of, you call that an interview? Well, I kind of only took two microphones over with me because of my luggage allowance and stuff. So they were sharing. And right. when I got the audio home, you couldn't really hear Charlie very well. So I kind of binned it. But she didn't like whiskey anyway. So, you know. Brilliant. So uh, our, our thing this week is a bad interview <laughs> with an X Factor star. Well, we don't even t- talk to her. Yeah, and, and our drama. Think of the hang potential on, that what on. there was in that. Is that seriously all you've got? Hang on, hang on. Let me just look something up. What, this, what the hell is going on now? That's hard drives are massive. Right, got, got something, right? Coincidentally, I also had yeah. the opportunity to sit down with two other cast members, Sam Pope and Luke Friend. He was in the X Fact as well. He was. See the calibre so of this, guests we've got on already? Yeah, Even whiskey if... and X rated thing. I mean, X factor things. Now, now. Right. <laughs> Have a listen to this one then. Enjoy. Oh, God. Whiskey! Whiskey! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this does have it. Yes, you guys are fans, aren't you? Yeah. Lagavulin, you saw yours, isn't it? Lagavulin's my favourite. Lagavulin? Oluguf. Yeah. Lagavulin. Lagavulin. Oh, le- yeah. like Leguflin. What is the proper way? Because you you easily ordered saying Le Leguflin in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, of course we're in well, Edinburgh. Just go bloody English. I prefer <laughs> Leguflin because it sounds better. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> he's a strong Leguflin. Hey, it's strong Leguflin, really easy. <laughs> what time is it? Because we definitely need to go. It's twenty past. 20 right, past. we better oh, go. go. We better go do a show. Bye, guys. We're halfway through this, show. and we just hear jack, 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 yeah. without the bass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not rock. <laughs> right, thanks, guys. Ah, impressions of Scotch people. Yeah, ties in with the beginning of the episode. See, that's good podcasting. That is. The thing too. Now, I can't believe this. I actually can't believe this. So you went all the way to New Zealand. You took your your recording equipment. Yeah. You managed to talk two big stars into doing an interview with you, and mm. and two other great people. Yeah. Four thanks. guests, and that's all we've got. Um. And let's be honest, you didn't even really ask a question in that second one. I kind of did. Ask them about uh, their favourite whiskey. No, you didn't. You said, so you're, you're, you're fans? Yeah, I forgot how to talk for a second there. Dude, it's been six years since we've done this. It's my first day back. Unbelievable. Dave, and, now right. we've got a, and now we've got a four or five minute section of a podcast called Whiskey and Things, where the things section, we currently haven't even had a thing. Because you Dude. asked both of them about whiskey. Right. I'll tell you what, about the interviews, I'm going to redeem myself later on. Okay? I've got a humdinger. Later, I will redeem myself in this episode. I don't believe you, but okay. Should we try and make turn this into a thing or, or what? Um, oh my God, what's that? <laughs> Dave. Nick. I th- what's that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nick. Nick. <laughs> I want to keep that in. All right. Dave. Nick. <laughs> Dave. Yes. I think it's time we hear from the Whiskey God. How in podcast form... Do we summon the whiskey or do we go shooting star style <laughs> and do a <laughs> dove from, from above? above. <laughs> <laughs> Uranu. <laughs> Uvavu. <laughs> Uranu. See, 
I can't even. <laughs> I, I, you are the noises. You've got you've got the voice and you've got the cooing. I, well, I don't have the looks. I've got to make up with it in other ways. I can't do those noises. I have to go. Wow. Hang on. Got me right in the eye there, Sorry. Right in the eye. I apologise. Anyway. Should we, uh, should should we, we try it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Hang, hang on. I think you might Is that? No. Look at that hole in the ceiling. What Nick? the hell is happening up there? It looks like there's a cloud oh, forming. There's a cloud. Some light coming through it. Oh, oh, my, oh what, what? and there he is. I think it's him. And there he is. Looking good. Welcome back, boys. Oh. I always knew you had the best faces. Thank you. For a podcast. Awesome. Bloody cheek. <laughs> How about you just give us your tasting notes for the Lafroy 10 years? Let's not be making them up now, right? <laughs> Should we cue the music, Dave? Yeah. Oh, he's got music now. Lafroy 10. Tasting notes. On the nose. Fresh, smoky sack of embers. Breeze on a farm. Or perhaps a proper midday nap in the barn. Maybe a bit of Band-Aid? On the palate. Leather. Charcoal. Wet stone. Smoky. A bit of seaweed. And of course, peaty. Let it open up wide, though. Towards the end. She'll give you peanut butter and taffy while keeping you intrigued with those herbal ocean undertones. That was beautiful. Thank he's gone. You. Thank you, Whiskey Art. He's gone. Just like that, the clouds have vanished. <sighs> and he's gone. You need to get that leak looked at. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I, my, my Band-Aid, as they say in America, plaster, was, was kind of... You were on. But sometimes I do want, like, some of those things. What is taffy? Taffy... Um, I'm guessing he's meaning like the salt water taffy. It's like an American candy. I oh, think. I see. It's a candy. Because whenever you hear these like tasting notes, I always think you're talking rubbish mm. because it just <clears throat> sounds like they're listing off a load of different scenarios and things. For example, let, let me read you. I mean, this is hilarious. I'll sit I'll, back. I'll, you read me something. I will read you from the, the tube, which the <laughs> bottle was in. Uh, Lafroig single malt scotch whiskey has always kept itself a bit remote, like the Islanders of Islay themselves. A touch aloof at first, but make the effort. <laughs> Broach acquaintance and you'll have a warm and genuine friend for life. Wow. I mean, that's about tasting whiskey. I mean, it just, sometimes it just comes across as quite pretentious. Anyway. Yeah, it's a marketing department, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it, like the tasting note stuff, based on memories and stuff. You know, it, a, a, a smell will trigger a memory for you and you only. Mm, you know, like, like, like my receptionist. Me. <laughs> like your like, hot receptionist. Yeah, I can't example. remember if she was hot. I just, you know, childhood crush. Instead of charm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She just had that cotton wool down, mate. You know. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> thanks, Whiskey God. We'll uh, see, see you, you next, next time. Week. The Whiskey. Dave, do you remember earlier on I said I was going to redeem myself? Oh, no. Is this another one of your dodgy interviews? Mm, yeah, but this one's longer, and I think it is better. Well, well, go on. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but I went to New Zealand. Did you go to New Zealand? Yeah, I got back this week. You don't live enough. I don't live enough. <laughs> You've been there too. I have many years ago, five yeah. years ago. No. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Was it that long ago? It was when we were doing the, the YouTube show, <laughs> you idiot, which was five years ago. Yeah, you're completely right. <laughs> no, I am. I think so I need to take that in for a second. <laughs> Feels like yesterday. For some reason, it? I thought it was like last year. Last year, something like that. But no. that was your American adventure. That was this year. But close. Okay. Yeah. Go. Anyway. What did you do when you were in New Zealand, Nicholas? On my tour of the South Island. Yes. I went to a little town called Omaru. I've never went to the South Island, so I don't know where that is. Oh, no. I was doing a dramatic pause, Dave. Oh, All right. Okay. Um, Omaru. It's a great little. Great little place. There's like wild penguins there. You can go look at little blue penguins. No way. Wild yeah. penguins? Yeah. They have a little colony there and they've kind of built, they're wild, yet they've kind of built these little, this little town for them. Just, just, I was, I'm going to digress. Little blue penguins. Did you know there was a penguin at Edinburgh Zoo, which has been knighted by the King of Norway? <laughs> I have heard that. 
I don't know where from. It must have been me. No, it wasn't. It was on something uh, I actually believed. Oh, lovely. Um, anyway, Omaru. Probably Q Ising. Omaru. Omaru. Or Oamaru, as oh. we'll find out in the... Um, in the, in, in, the in the next in the next clip in the next clip basically with a guy called Matt Wicks any now, relation to Rob Wicks <laughs> no people don't know who Rob Wicks is Rob Wicks was the MD the musical director for the show that Nick did while he was in New Zealand close brackets <laughs> Matt Wicks is the uh, the manager of the cellar door which is basically the retail outlet for the um, the New Zealand whiskey collection the New Zealand whiskey collection yes it's not a distillery no. As he'll explain. I'll let right. him explain it. Um, but it's something very exciting. And you were there for what, an hour? Two hours? Uh, yeah, I'd say an hour or so. Because I, I kind of turned up at 10.30 in the morning to do a whiskey tasting and just asked him to do a podcast. No way. Yeah. And he just joined He was in. so good about it. Oh, amazing. I can't wait he to hear this. He was so good about it. And um, it was really informative and I had, a, I had a great time. So yeah, this is me talking to Matt Wicks. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you for doing this, Matthew. You're welcome. Wixie. Yes. I believe. I know a Wixie too. There's yeah. a few Wixies. Yeah. Um, could you give me just a quick kind of uh, history of this place? This place is not distillery. New Zealand whiskey collection. So you acquired uh, some barrels a few years ago, I believe. We did, yeah. Not a distillery, but once was. Um, it was in Dunedin, about an hour and a half south of here. And the distillery, unfortunately, went through tough times and Fosters from Australia bought them out. Yeah. At a weak moment and should have kept the company going, in my opinion and many others, but didn't and sold everything that they had off. So at the time there were about 30,000 casks of whiskey and most of those were sold off and blended with scotch, we believe, and sold to the Asian market and the stills were disassembled and moved to the Cook Islands where they're producing rum with them now. I read that, yeah. And a very it's small a amount. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a sin. Yeah, and a very small amount of whiskey remained in New Zealand, um, about 600 casks, and they were privately purchased by the Prestons and moved here to Omaru. Right. And they owned a winery in Tauranga called Mills Reef, and they took it upon themselves to take a lot of blended whiskey that was ageing in American oak and putting it into their red wine barrels that they'd freshly emptied. So it gives us a, a wide range of whiskey styles that we have here today, some of which have remained in the American oak casks for the entirety of their maturation, yeah. some of which have been in two types of casks, American oak to start, and then red wine, wine barrels. So that's what we've got here in front of us at the moment. We've got right. four whiskies um, that we're going to be tasting, the High Wheeler, the South Island Single Malt, the Double Wood, and the Omaruvian. So the first two are very traditional. They're aged in American oak only, and the, the second two that we'll try are aged in red wine casks. Yeah, you can kind of see that from the colour already, can't you? The colours, it's That's the beautiful. first. It is. It's the first thing that catches people's eye. They walk in and they see these bottles and they think that we're selling brandy or, yeah. or rum or something and we have to explain to them, no, it is just the red wine casks. And I think the 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 depth of colour that we're getting from these whiskies is down to the fact that the wine casks are, are fairly local. Mm -hmm. They were probably almost wet to the touch on the inside of the oak when they were when they were filled. So unlike imported, you know, sherry or port casks that can lose a bit of character over time, these have got so much wine trapped in that oak that the whiskey's pulled out. So the, the depth of colour and, and the flavour is unlike any sort of double wood that I've ever had before. Okay. All right. So this is the big, the high wheeler. Yeah. What have we got here? So this is a 21-year-old, and that blows people away to start with because tw finding 21-year-olds for $8 a glass now is, <laughs> is very rare. Um, it is a blended whiskey. And unfortunately, the B word still scares a few people off, and it shouldn't because it's an, it's a beautiful whiskey. Yeah, it's lovely. It smells great. Yeah. So what this is is it's a blend of single malt and grain spirit, so made from unmalted barley and malt barley, aged in American oak for the entirety. It's bottled at 43%, um, but it's just a nice whiskey to start with. It's a good palate-opening whiskey. It's nice and clean and fresh. It's got subtle fruit flavours coming through, pears, pineapples, and of course, that, that vanilla on the nose that we're familiar mm. with with that toasted oak. Yeah. Yeah. So it's weird with podcasts when you're like, oh, yeah, gorgeous. Taste. <laughs> Can you taste that? No. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you can't smell it or taste <laughs> it, but just take our word for it. We'll better still come in sometime and try it for yourself. So, how long have you worked here? I've been here, um, it'll be five years in February. So, almost five years. Yeah. Yeah, so prior to that, um, spent a bit of time in the UK. And that's where I learned about whiskey, I think. I went over there and thought I had a, a good hold on what whiskey was and what it meant, but 
quickly learned that I knew nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after a brief, my first brief venture to Scotland, I learned no, I knew nothing at all and learned a lot. Um, but after being in the industry and being, you know, saturated by the stuff for the last few years, not not literally, of course, but there's a bit of tasting involved now and again. Um, you do, you, you can't help but fall in love with it. It's yeah. amazing. So I feel very lucky to be part of a, this industry in New Zealand because it's so small at the yeah, moment. It is sure. a growth industry, but we're just at the start now. I mm-hmm. think we're... New Zealand is now as where Tasmania was 15 years ago. You know, it was just breaking ground with whiskey and now it's a, it's a huge thing over there especially. I think we have a handful of distilleries compared to compared to what they have in, in, uh, in Tassie. There'd be at least 30 producing whiskey there now. There's oh, really? less than 10 here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Number two. So the South Island single malt, this is a 25-year-old. And um, again, the age just throws people out. They're not expecting to try something of, of this of this age. So this is a single malt whiskey. Um, it's not coming from a single year though. There is whiskey in this mix from the late 80s and early 90s. Now it's all single malt, it's all from the same distillery, um, but there is whiskey there featuring from 1988 through to 1993. Mm. So it's a blend that we've crafted oh, wow. on site. It's lightly peated. You'll get a little bit of that smoky flavour, more on the nose than on the palate. So with the ageing, is it um, are the laws the same here where the youngest barrel has to be the age which goes on the bottle. That's right, right, yeah. So whenever we blend whiskey together, even if it's a single malt or a blend, we have to use that youngest age. Yeah. Um, that's still the, – the one thing that's different here, though, is the minimum age, and that's two years. So New Zealand and Australia – Oh, really? Two years, yeah, for a single malt whiskey, which if we were ageing it in a, you know, your standard bourbon cast, 200 litre size, is – Really not a lot of time. So that would be a smaller cask that we'd yeah. use, like the one that's sitting behind me at the moment. That's a 20-litre cask, and that produces a, a beautiful single malt in two years. Wow, well, yeah, because it's more concentrated, more surface area compared that's to right. what's in it. Yeah. And we do have, not so much today, because it's still a little bit chilly out there, but we do have a, a warmer climate overall, uh, the same as Australia, so hence our whiskies uh, take a shorter time to, to mm. mature. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's very, very, very nice. It is, and yeah. unfortunately, you know, the peaty flavour is it's very, very mellow. It's very subtle, very subtle. but that's a, it's a scary flavour for a lot of people. People come into the shop and I say, what whiskey do you like? And they don't tell me what they like, they tell me what they don't like, and peat is still a flavour that does put a lot of people off, but mm. this is a nice gateway whiskey. It's, it's very subtle. New Zealand peat is very subtle. There's only a handful of distilleries that have ever peated malt in New Zealand. And it's it's very easy. It's very smooth. It's very light. It doesn't. It's not like an ashtray or an old chimney. No. The thing is, that there's a definite scent I haven't smelt before, and mm. a taste I haven't smelt with anything else before. Yeah. It's almost like a spiciness, or a, I don't know what it is. It's, I'm trying to put my finger on it. But. Some people do pick up a light spice here, and you know maybe that does oh, come fruit. back to it's the fruity. Yeah. That could also come back to the to the peat that was used because the the flora and fauna the the, the plants that make up this peat are different to what you're going to find in Scotland and yeah. anywhere else in the world, um, so that could influence the flavour as well. But yeah, light spice is something that people get from this this one too. Yeah, I'm still trying to pick it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a beautiful town, by the way. I've had a little bit because everything seems to open at ten thirty here. And I was yeah, up at, I we're was a bit up lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this this street in particular doesn't really open its doors until about 10 o'clock. Um, that's when the tour buses start to roll through and everyone yeah. gets out of the camping grounds and the and the camper vans start to roll in as well. So. Yeah, so I was up at, I was at the camp of, campsite here on the harbour all night. Oh, yeah. And uh, I went to see the penguins. Did you see some come through the campsite too? Because there's a lot of them that just walk, yeah, roam no, around. No, I didn't. I was, I was warned about them. Yeah. Um, don't, you know, don't step on them basically. No. But uh, yeah, it was all night and I was up at uh, like six this morning. Well, I got woken up randomly and I saw this beautiful sunrise. Oh, wow. And yep. it was absolutely stunning. Definitely a place to visit. Have Very you pronounced it again? Omaru. Omaru. Well, see, here's the thing. This is a hotly debated topic. I, I do believe the correct pronunciation is Oamaru. Yeah. But like all locals, the, you got a certain twang mm-hmm. and we've just dropped that start of it off and just called it Omaru. So yeah. if you watch the evening news, they tend to pronounce it Oamaru, right. whereas a local will call it Omaru. Either yeah. one works. Either one works. Omaravian. O- Omaruvian. 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 Oamaruvian. That's difficult to pronounce sober. <laughs> <laughs> right. Number three, double wood. Double wood. Yeah. So this is- A bit more colour on this one. A lot more colour. Yeah. This is a strange one. Now, this is- Hmm, how to describe it? It is a whiskey at heart. It's a good whiskey though, and the reason I say it's a good whiskey is because it's a it opens itself up to new ways of thinking. Um, a lot of people 
come in still and they're not fans of whiskey. They may have been put off by something in the past that they don't like, but this whiskey here has got such a broad flavour to it that it appeals to whiskey drinkers but non-whisky drinkers as well. The red wine barrel has had a huge influence on it. It's local red wine, New Zealand Pinot Noir, ageing in French oak. And it's transformed the flavour from essentially what was the first whiskey that you had, the High Wheeler. This is the same spirit, but right. the red wine barrels changed it. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can smell that wine straight away. Yeah. So instead of that fresh tropical fruit and citrus and vanilla, that's gone and you get this uh, Christmas cakey, cherry, raisin sort of flavour yeah. coming through. Mm. If you ever remember mum or, or grandma making a Christmas cake in the kitchen, it smells like that. You walk into the house and you get that warmth of that baking smell. Yeah, totally. That's what I get with this whiskey. Totally do. Mm. That's the thing. With all this uh, smelling and tasting and stuff, it's all about the memories which trigger, yeah. you know, what you can actually, you know, so if you haven't smelled that yet. That's, that's maybe right. Whoever's in these first two that I was trying to pick out, it's something I haven't experienced maybe. Yeah. So I don't have anything to put my finger on. Yeah. This one I can. And that's the great thing about whiskey tasting is what you taste isn't wrong. Yeah. You can sit there, especially when we do one of these tasting cards that we've got in front of us, it's not one person that comes up with this, it's four or five or six of us sitting around in a circle and we're all throwing all these random tastes and senses and flavours and experiences out there and that helps us craft this because if one person came up with it, it's a very narrow view on what this whiskey should be. So yeah. whenever you're tasting whiskey, the, the thing I encourage people to do is just say what the first thing that comes into your mind because it's not wrong. It's what you're tasting. It's what you're experiencing. I'm enjoying this one. <laughs> the last one's my favourite though, so I'll be interested to see how you feel with that, that is one. dark. It the, is dark. The Omeruvian. It is a big whiskey. So the double wood that we just had, that's that's 40% strength. Mm. Um, the Omeruvian is cask strength, so that's 55.8. 55. 55.8%. <clears throat> so this is, I liken the double wood and the Omeruvian to a piece of music. They're both the same. They're both the same piece of music, but the Omeruvian, we've got the volume, we've got the bass, it's been turned right up, so everything's amplified. Yeah. Those flavours are much bolder. You don't get the slight light spice. It's like a punch in the mouth, but then it gives you a nice big hug afterwards. It's more subtle on the nose for me. Okay. I can't get as much, yeah. That one hmm. seemed to be a bit sharper in the nose. but Interesting. Then again, the palate may have adjusted over over that time mm. and you've, you've become accustomed to those flavours. That's why the double wood <coughs> would have been quite sharp initially because you've yeah. gone from something quite light and peaty to... Very berry and, and raisin flavoured. But it's much thicker, this one. It's got oh, a yeah, it is. There it is. There it yeah. is. <laughs> and it explodes into the sinuses too. Yeah, everywhere. Yep. Kind of case the, taste the tannins in it as well a bit. You do. You get yeah. a real drying sensation Definitely. as well. And there's a real journey on this whiskey. It starts off very bold and, and almost sharp, and then that mellows out, and you get the drying, the tannins, but then you get this little sweet warmth at the end, and it just sits there. Yeah. It doesn't go away. So those berry, those raisin flavours, they just sit there. Mm. I'm savouring it. There yeah, we go. That's, one, that's one to savour. <laughs> <laughs> a little goes a long way with this whiskey. Yeah, it's definitely got a kick. It does. For sure. <clears throat> those were four fantastic whiskies. Glad you enjoyed them. What else we got here? We got is, is it whiskey infused? Was it honey and all kinds of stuff? What? We have whiskey infused marmalade. Oh, that was which, the one. which is made locally um, by a company here, and they do a fantastic job on it. We give them uh, a decent amount of whiskey, and I, I hope a lot of it finds its way into the marmalade. It tastes like it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if they which put one, everything. Which in Which one there, do they put in there? Um, we use the High Wheeler. Okay. actually, the 21 year old uh, works really well. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe later on down the track that we do a jam with them and do the double wood because I think that would work really well jam. In, a, in a jam. Because <laughs> it's already got that jammy flavour. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what we can come up with. Well, I'm definitely going to go home with something. Excellent. This is great. Um, thank you very much for, for doing this. Oh, um, it's been I, a I just literally walked in and uh, kind of surprised you with it. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Ah, so you can do interviews. Well done. Proud of you. <laughs> I can. And I'm not going to lie. I bought every single one of those whiskeys. Did you? Amazing, yeah. amazing. Well, All I'm, four of them. I'm sure we'll do a, an episode on one of them. You're not having any of them. What oh, are you talking about? Lovely. That's really kind of you. They were gorgeous though. Mate, I really enjoyed that. It's great, wasn't he it? He is gold. An Did he, and he had no idea you were about, like, you didn't, no. you just rocked up, set the mics up, asked him if you could do it, set the mics up. Yeah, I explained what we were doing. Um, and he was that good, because he was so articulate. Yeah, well, he lives it, doesn't he? He lives it. That's his thing. He's a... Uh, He's just he's so passionate about what he does. I have a couple of three things I'd like to talk about. <laughs> okay. Uh, number one, whiskey marmalade. Yes. Did you try some? I didn't get to try and any. And you didn't buy any? No. Idiot. 
Sorry, bud. Yeah, mate, I got loads for Christmas. I got about six different whiskey marmalades for Christmas, all different varieties of whiskey. So we could have a tasting session. Beautiful. Look forward Actually, to that. Actually, that's a good idea. Things that you eat that are whiskey flavoured. New segment for the show. Beautiful. Secondly, Nick, Tasmanian whiskey. What's that about? I've never heard of Tasmanian didn't even whiskey. Know that was a thing. And you sit there and you agree. Oh, yeah. Mm, no, right? I was like, oh, yeah. No, you didn't. I you agreed because oh, you no, wanted went, to make yourself look like an oh, expert. Yeah. I never said I was an expert. Uh, I bet he knew you were lying. I bet he knew you were lying. Of course he knew I was. I wasn't lying. <laughs> I grew up. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know about Tasmanian whiskey, but now I do, and now I want to find out more about it. And and the third the third thing I, I really liked about, and we should do a Tasmanian whiskey at some point on the show. Okay. We should find one. Do they sell that in Waitrose? Well, I'm sure <laughs> in the whiskey shop in Mayfair, we'll probably be able to find a lovely cheap bottle. All right, we're both um, chipping in for that one. <laughs> um, th- thirdly, I really liked what he was talking about, the whiskey notes, because it was like we were talking earlier when I was reading the the, the thing, like... How do they come up with some of those things that they, they say? Because yeah. sometimes you read whiskey notes when you're drinking a whiskey and you're like, I'm not getting any of this. Like what the whiskey god sometimes says, I'm like, I didn't get that, mm-hmm. but cool, sounds nice. Um, but it's interesting that it's there's no wrong answers there, are there? When when you're tasting a whiskey or you're smelling a whiskey, it's your personal perspective on it. Yeah, And I like the fact they get six or seven people in a room to decide what's going on that thing and they're all it's every a bit more everyone, of an average isn't it yeah because it, it will be different from person to person um so there will naturally when you ever you hear whiskey notes there'll be things that yeah you don't you experience. may be picking up a fruity thing maybe like an orange or a- apple pear or whatever but to me that might be a pineapple exactly and that's all right there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that so mate. if you pick up none of the things that the whiskey god ever says yeah and you've got your own ones that's fine. And in fact, you should share your own whiskey notes with us, your tasting notes with us. If anyone has, whilst listening to this, decided, oh, I'll get some of that Lafroy 10 and add a sip, add a, add a bottle. Well, can you taste the taffy? Can you taste the taffy? Exactly. Can you taste the taffy? Hashtag, can you taste the taffy? <laughs> and there's our, yeah, there you go. That's how, that's how you social media. <laughs> so uh, talking of social media, we do have an Instagram a Twitter and a Facebook setup. We do. We are Whiskey and Things Podcast on Instagram and Whiskey and Things on Facebook and Twitter. That's whiskey with no E. So head over to one of those for some bonus content. Yes, and uh, and we hope you've enjoyed our review of the Freud 10-year-old. Maybe you've learned something. Uh, and I hope you want to come back for more things. Yes. As we try and live a little bit more. Yeah, because we don't live enough, Dave. We don't live enough. Right, should we round this up? Let's round this up. Well, I thought I was trying to do that anyway, but go on, guess carry on. Well, I was going to put a full stop on the end. Oh, please do. Full full stop. Full stop. (laughs) Period. (laughs) Thanks, guys. We will see you next time. Bye.